The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill, coughing up a storm already. <laughs> Joey Tysick. We I don't just, know what happened. We were just talking Harry Potter all before we started the show. All of a sudden, we were rep- reminiscing. Um, but we got sports to talk about. Um, NBA action is uh, it's kind of back. We have some summer league games. I didn't watch any. Uh, I watched highlights, as did Malik, I believe. Did you watch any actual games? You mean, do you mean preseason? Yeah, like <clears throat> you said summer you? league. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, I tried and I, to tell I watch myself the summer not league more than I watch league. NBA preseason. Okay. NBA preseason is how I feel. Like, how you feel about summer league is how I feel about preseason. Okay. I really don't care. I slowly yeah. ramp up because I actually feel a little bit better about preseason than summer league because you get to see more of uh, the actual rotation and what that's going to look like. Um, and bigger names play more meaningful minutes. Uh, so, yeah. I watched, I think the the big one that everybody kind of kept their eye on was the Spurs taking on the Thunder. Victor Wembanyama, Wembanyama taking on Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren looks like he's aged 10 years in like two years. To maybe me, it's, maybe the, it's just the facial hair. It, it could he, be. He put on like 15 pounds of muscle. Yeah. Still skinny, but it you can see he's not as skinny as he was. Yeah. And the bright spot obviously was Victor. Victor didn't play a whole lot in the summer league, but he got some good minutes in this first uh, preseason action. And man, he looked as good as advertised. He is going to be dangerous yeah. to the NBA, and it stinks that that that, that like takes away from Chet Holmgren's uh, shine a little bit because people I think already have forgotten how good Chet can be as well. Um, but the way that Victor moves, the way that he moves even off the ball. The way that he spots up for his threes, it just it's like Kevin Durant four inches taller, which is wild to me. Um and yeah, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch. I still don't know if he's gonna maybe make rookie of the year because I think the Spurs are actually a decent team. Um especially with Devin Vassell getting his uh his big contract now actually, um, but what did you see from the, from that game? Anything exciting? They both showed everything that people are why people are excited about the both of them. Last year, Chet came into the summer league. He had a great first game, then started to slow down a little bit, and then got hurt playing in a round ball classic game in Seattle. Didn't play his whole first season. He's showing the handle, his ability to shoot. He caught an alley oop off a of pick and roll, driving to the rim. Yeah, he's he's got all the skill that people saw, and it mm-hmm. looks like he's improved even more. Right, he got a full year. Ironically, him being hurt gave him a full year to keep working and developing his game. Mm-hmm. And he he looks confident. Yeah, Victor, I mean, what more? What do we say at this point? Like, the odds of him not being good, <laughs> or him being a disappointment, seem impossible. Right at this point, because what every time he's on a court, he. He does something that makes you just – it makes your jaw drop. Like, yeah. it seems like something you've, you've never seen before because mm-hmm. he's almost 7'5", yeah. and he's basically a small forward. Right. Like, he, he can he can handle at the top of the key. He can shoot off the dribble. His jumper is clean. That spin move to, like, the up and under lefty layup he made around Chet, uh, nobody his size is doing stuff like this. Yeah. The only thing that I think – is always at the back of my mind, at least. And I, I hate bringing it up, but injury. I think that's like the only way that his career ever gets derailed. Um, I hope that he doesn't have to deal with that. Um, obviously, he's going to get injured at some point. Um, but I hope it's nothing serious. I hope it's nothing that's ongoing because the NBA could use Victor, I think. They they really need him at this point. Yeah. 
because we're about to hit that weird part of the NBA where we're going to have a star transition. LeBron's going to be out of the league. I hate to, it's wild to say Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, those guys are getting closer. Yeah, I, there will be a Steph retirement tour. Yeah. Once, like, De'Aaron Fox and John Morant, once the, all of them are, like, in their primes, yeah, that's when the Steph Curry mm-hmm. retirement tour will start, like, four seasons away, maybe. Right. And so, we need to start getting that. Like, we've already started, obviously, with, like, Luka and things like that, um, but I just, I just want to start seeing more and more stars uh, come up as we get into this new generation, whatever it is. Um, it's interesting how each play style seems to slightly slightly change like everybody talks about that the 80s being just kind of physically demanding the 90s also kind of being physically demanding but there's a lot of flashiness in the 90s then we get into the 2000s the 2000s was like, was like the sweet spot yeah there was still physical pl- <coughs> physical play but but the skill level had reached like an all time i kind of called the 2000s like the the age of the big man to be honest um because you had your tim duncans even David Robinson for a little while, Shaq, Yao Ming, um, and a lot of those kind of guys. And then you get into the 2010s, and now we're in kind of the the modern era or whatever, and three-point shooting has exploded, obviously. So I'm curious to see what that next age is, I guess. Um, The Pistons did play the Suns in preseason, and it was an exciting game. Asar Thompson hit a game tying three to send the game into overtime. I, I don't really care necessarily. Chris was good all excited. Him, good to see him confidently hitting a shot in a yeah. game time situation. That's good to see. Yeah. But all the scrubs were in the game. It wasn't like as meaningful. Uh, but yeah, it, it's cool to see that he produced and they ended up losing the game. So didn't really matter in the end but he got some playing time he looked pretty good from what i saw uh kind of an extension of summer league so again i'm excited to see what asar can do for this team the only thing that i don't like and i'm hoping that eventually this will change beef stew is in the starting lineup what's your opinion do you do you have the same opinion as me i this entire time i was assuming i don't know if um, James Wiseman is he hurt? I don't know what. Well, I don't he, know if you saw Monty Williams say that, like basically Wiseman and Bagley are fighting for that backup center spot or something, and so a lot of people are interpreting that as there's only room for one of those guys. I, I'm I was not sure. Sit the last was it the last half of the season where James Wiseman started a lot of games. Yeah. And in the summer league, they started Jalen Duran and James Wiseman together a ton. So mm-hmm. most Pistons fans kind of assumed that's like that's the direction they were going with yeah. the four and five. But I guess with the experience Beef Stew has and him improving as a shooter and him being able to do the dirty work and be a really smart defender, mm-hmm. I guess it makes sense of it with him starting at the four. But it did seem more exciting yeah. with James Wiseman out there with Jalen Duran. And Marvin Bagley has more offensive talent mm-hmm. than Beef Stew, but I I guess Beef Stew is the best player out of all of them at yeah. the moment. So it it makes some sense. Yeah. I I also, though, wouldn't hate if they went small ball and they put Bowie on at the four or something like that. The, the defense or maybe would a, be terrible. Maybe a, Sar, <laughs> maybe a Sar matches up better if you put even him at the four, which yeah. is weird, but... The yeah. defense would just be strange. It would You'd be. have to scheme up something really different. Yeah. Um, But I don't know. Like... If you look at last year, last year, like you have to find time for Bojan to get in the game. If he's healthy, he's probably going to start. Yeah, I assume Asar comes off the bench. Yeah, yeah, that would make that would make sense. Okay, that's enough preseason. I'm I don't watch enough of it. <laughs> I'll keep up with highlights and stuff like that, but um, it's just not meaningful just yet. I have wait. I I have a maybe one or two notes on some rookies. Okay. That either played for Michigan colleges or come from Michigan. Yeah. Amani Bates scored 10 points in the fourth quarter for the Cavs. Yep. Congratulations. Kobe Bufkin played decent too, I think. He hit some jumpers. 
He went to Michigan. Good for him. Okay. I didn't see Kobe get in, but. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's about it. <laughs> that think, is your Michigan NBA preseason report. I, I think Amani could actually, could do something for Cleveland potentially. Yeah. Xavier Simpson hit a hook shot for the Pistons. That's another one. Get him out of here. <laughs> Respect I'm the sorry. hook shot. I'm sorry. I'm glad You're that You're not he, a basketball purist. You know, I'm, I'm glad that he made it to the NBA because I never thought he would. Um, so congrats on that as a player that I never thought would amount to much per se. Um, that's cool. Um, college football looking like a pretty weak slate for the most part. A couple of decent games. Yeah. The, the noon matchups really aren't great. <laughs> They're not amazing. Yeah. Michigan got Indiana. They are a 33 and a half point favorite. Yeah. Yeah, it, it might be like 14 to like 7 or 14-3 after the first quarter. Yeah. And then, yeah, Michigan does what they do. Mm-hmm. They just tighten up and just take off. Yeah, Georgia playing Vanderbilt, Ohio State at Purdue. They're on Peacock. Nobody cares. Yeah. Unless you're one of those fan bases. Syracuse at Florida State, Arkansas at Alabama. Arkansas, maybe. They've. They've competed. In the this. first really interesting matchup is Oregon Washington at three thirty. Yeah, and that's a great game. Mm-hmm. Really, really good matchup. Yeah, probably the one of the day. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. could be USC Notre Dame is later. It could be the Pac twelve championship at some point. It, so yeah, um, there are, there are some good games later in the day. Arizona Washington State. It's a lot of offense. Arizona Arizona almost beat USC. They took USC to the buzzer. Yeah. And USC is defensively challenged. I think that Arizona realistically should have won that game. Yes. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Um, Auburn versus LSU, maybe. Yeah. LSU is probably just going to put up points. Yeah. Uh, and then USC Notre Dame. This is interesting. It's kind of a weird <laughs> interesting, too. Yeah. Notre Dame has quality defense. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Their offense is in a very strange spot right now. Yeah. First three weeks, they were unstoppable. After that, they haven't been able to really do a lot in the passing game at all. Right. I think there's a stat that they haven't completed a pass over 10, yard to, over 10 yards to a receiver since, I think, week four, three or four. Wow. It's been two or three weeks since they completed a pass to a receiver over 10 yards. That's where they are right now. Yikes. And USC likes to completely bomb it nonstop. Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams is still just a freak of nature. He's a college version of Pat Mahomes, even though there was a college version of Pat Mahomes, but he's an even better version. Hmm. That's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, it's it's in South Bend. It's in, in yeah at Notre Dame, so hmm. yeah, we'll okay. see how that one goes. And then we got Miami, North Carolina. That should kind of be a fun game. Did you see? Yeah. It, did, did, it was, I, I assume you I feel like we shouldn't saw talk it. about it. I think we should. It's that much of an embarrassment. So, yeah, long story short. Should Mario Cristobal be fired? Miami was up 20-17 to 17 on Georgia Tech in the fourth quarter with 30 seconds left. Oh, boy. They should have won by more. They didn't play very well, but they had the win. Mm-hmm. Georgia Tech had no timeouts. Miami was on their side of the – well, Georgia Tech side of the field. Yeah. All they had to do was take a knee. Yeah. What was it, 37 30 sec- seconds yeah. left or something? No timeouts left for Georgia Tech. And you the play clock the is 40 well. seconds. Yeah. And they decide to run another play. <laughs> they decide to run another play <laughs> because nothing's gonna, nothing wrong no, no, is gonna no. happen. Of you're course just, not. You're just gonna get a few more extra yards for your running back. Yeah, yeah. Just pad the stats. Yeah, pad the stats. Running back may or may not have fumbled. Mm-hmm. It looked like he may have been down. Yeah. But human error happens in games. Right. And you allowed it to happen. Yeah. You allowed the refs. You to put have, yourself in that situation. You allowed the refs to have sway in what happened. Mm-hmm. The running back lost control of the ball while going to the ground. And then somehow Georgia Tech just hits two silly passes. Yeah. Very silly passes. <laughs> like 60 yards, two plays, game over. Yeah. Miami players are on the sideline crying. Mario Cristobal is just dumbfounded. Yeah. There's, it's, it's not, it's sad. There's a clip of an offensive lineman. Like, just red-faced tears flowing down his eyes on the sideline. Yeah. He's just repeating to himself, what the F are we doing? He says it, like, three times just yeah. sitting there. It, and it's then insane. Mario Cristobal has the audacity to go up at the pre- press conference after the game and say, we teach our running backs to 
hold on to the ball with two hands or something like that. Or we we teach ball security. <laughs> Listen. But you don't teach yourself kneel downs. Like what? It it doesn't even make sense. It, That's why I don't want to like go It's even on. more absurd when you realize he did something similar to this when he coached at yeah. Oregon. Yeah. They were up on Stanford with like a minute and change left. Could have started taking knees. Stanford had no timeouts. Mm -hmm. And they ran the ball. And C.J. Verdell fumbled. And Stanford tied the game and then won in overtime. Yeah. Mario Cristobal is a hell of a recruiter. He knows how to put talent in the right positions. But that in-game coaching. Yeah. It's not worth the money he's being paid. I want to say that was... Uh... That game had, because uh, I think I heard somebody talking about it on the radio, that Shane Vereen was in that game, which that was a name. To it actually, it was uh, I, it was the clip of uh, Valenti in the ticket. Yeah. He said he said Shane Vereen. It was actually C.J. Verdell. Okay. Shane Vereen was a California. That's what I back. thought when he said it. Yeah, he it said it. I was like, I, he knows who he's talking about, but he just said a wrong okay. name. All right, cool. Yeah. Glad that I wasn't also the big. Yeah, the, the big guys make mistakes, too. <laughs> Good to know. But yeah. Moral um, of the story, Mario Cristobal is a fool. Yeah. And Miami might never trust him again. Here's a good question for you. Mario Cristobal or Brandon Staley? Who are you taking? Just leaving football? So, <laughs> Mario Cristobal made Justin Herbert look like he might be a bust. Brandon Staley has looked made Justin and, Herbert and kind of look like he might be a can't win with Justin Herbert. <laughs> Brandon Staley can't win, like, playoff games. Mario Cristobal won a Rose Bowl with Justin Herbert. Yeah. At least they were able to win the conference and win a, well, I think they lost the, they lost the conference championship, I think, to Utah. But then they won the Rose Bowl. It was something <laughs> like that. They won a Rose Bowl. He did it with Justin Herbert. Yeah. So, yeah, this Miami version of Mario, it's, uh, Brandon Staley is a, bigger embarrassment in the NFL. Okay. Because you, you have a generational talent and you just can't get it together. Yeah. So that, that'll that be an interesting matchup. Yeah. Both those teams got something to prove. Uh, Missouri, Kentucky is kind of interesting too. Missouri should have beat LSU. It was whoever made it to 40 and LSU made it to 41st. Yeah. Missouri, I, I also believe Missouri should have won that game, but yeah. That's how Jaden Daniels had an insane performance. Mm -hmm. He got hurt in the third quarter and still made big plays. Yeah. UCLA, Oregon State, also an interesting one. Uh, another big Pac-12 matchup. So, we'll see where that goes. And Duke doesn't have Riley Leonard, I think. So, oh. yeah, it's going to be a weird one for them. Yeah. It's a home game, so that helps. But mm -hmm. they're playing NC State, who just came off of a 48-41 to win over Marshall. Wow. Very strange season for NC State so far. Okay. So I have to bring it up. Michigan State is at Rutgers. Listen, Joe. Rutgers listen. is favored four and a half. And they should be. <laughs> it's crazy. Listen, if if Michigan State loses this game, it's over. Oh, yeah. They're not making a bowl game. Easily. Easy over. But Rutgers is the better football team right now. Yeah. Which is kind of, de it, not kind of, it's depressing. Yeah. It's basically for, a must yeah. win for Michigan State. Now, Rutgers has moments where their offense is just disgusting mm -hmm. and they can't do much. But they're tough. Yeah. They they still they play smart football. They hit hard. Mm -hmm. And they don't make many mistakes. Yeah. And for an MSU team that's kind of just trying to figure things out right now, playing a team like that, it's a good chance you lose. Yeah. If this was in East Lansing, I'd give Michigan State a, a real chance. But it being in New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, I got to give it to Rutgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I don't want to pick it, but it's going to be what tough. What time is that game? Noon? Uh, oh, I'll, have to, I'll be watching that one on my phone while I'm watching Michigan on my TV. Yeah. Um, in the rankings, Oklahoma is now number five after knocking off Texas in a – Pretty wild game. Texas falling back to nine makes no sense. We haven't yeah, even gotten there yet. But it's, it's weird to it, me, too. I still think Texas is the better team. Oklahoma just pulled it out in the end. Yeah. They they yeah, they yeah just Quinn Ewers struggled, I, I think, hurt them. He, he didn't make enough plays. Mm -hmm. um, 
Penn State, Washington, Oregon, still undefeated. Texas at nine, like we just said. USC at ten. USC dropping after winning. They just they deserve it, but they, they really looked do. ugly yeah. doing it. Uh, Alabama at eleven at five and one. UNC is at twelve five and zero. Oh. This is their first five and zero oh start since the nineties, I believe. Yeah, Drake May, and he you get a generational quarterback, but he hasn't been even playing up to what he was last year. I don't feel like this last game against Syracuse was the first game where he looked like last year's Drake May. Yeah, it's taken him a few games to adjust to their new offense, mm-hmm. but he's yeah, he had like four fifty and three touchdowns this game. Yeah, he looked like Drake May. Ole Miss at thirteen. Louisville at 14 after you said Notre Dame was going to just win. I I didn't believe in Louisville. <laughs> I didn't believe. Listen, Jack Harlow was there. Yeah. That was, Donovan Mitchell was there. Donovan Mitchell brought Darius Garland and yeah, Evan Mobley. Right. He brought the Cavs. Mm-hmm. I didn't know these things beforehand. Yeah. Things that will obviously sway a college football game. <laughs> Listen, They have Russ Smith in Louisville, uh, they, attendance. Shouts out to Russ Smith and Chris's <laughs> favorite player, Peyton Siva. But listen, they just they outplayed him. Mm-hmm. Jeff Brom. Jeff Brom is a better football coach than Marcus Freeman right now. Mm-hmm. And Louisville might have a better staff. I didn't take that into account. I didn't take into account how explosive Jawar Jordan is, Louisville's running back. Yeah. I think he leads the country in rushing yards right now. He's averaging almost eight yards per carry, which is crazy. Yeah. They they just hit and schemed open plays. Mm-hmm. They hit a play every time they needed it. In the fourth quarter, they kept making Notre Dame make mistakes. They they just got a really good win. Yeah, and they have potential down the stretch. Their their schedule is not hard at all. No, but not they at all. but they have ranked opponents. Like they pay, they play Pitt this week, no big deal. But then they play Duke, which is a good one. And, but they got it at home. Right, exactly. They got Duke at home, and then to end the season, they have they got, their rivalry game against Kentucky is at home. Yeah. And then they go they, to Miami. Yeah. Who's afraid? Who's afraid of going into Miami right, right now? There's a chance Nobody Louisville is. could be undefeated. That would, that would be Is that wild? Insane. I knew looking at their schedule to start the season, it wasn't very difficult. Yeah. But I I expect at least 10-2 and two now. Yeah. Which is incredible for Jeff Brom in his first season back at Louisville. And even with it being an easy schedule, and even how you feel about Miami or Kentucky or Duke, they would have knocked. They would be under. They potentially could be undefeated with four ranked opponent wins. That's just wild to think about. Yeah. So, thought I'd bring them up. Um, Oregon State, Utah, Duke, UCLA, Washington State, Tennessee, Notre Dame. I don't know how Notre Dame is still there. To be honest, knock them out. Uh, LSU at twenty two, Kansas at twenty three, Kentucky and Miami, rounding it out. Shouts out to Kansas for uh, going to Georgia and getting popped. <laughs> Not looking good at all. Uh, shouts out to Kansas for just rolling UCF, mm. putting up a ton of yards. Uh, we're months away, not even really close to the NFL draft, but one of my favorite running backs in the, in the upcoming draft is going to be Devin Neal. Mm. Starting running back for Kansas. Yeah, He's got size, he's got speed, he's elusive. He's got everything you need in a Modern running back. Mm-hmm. And I think he's going to be a steal for whoever picks him up. I'm a huge fan of Devin Neal. Yeah. Anything else college that you wanted to bring up? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, really, I really don't. Well, actually, Ohio State is still soft. Uh, They can't run the ball. Kyle McCord might be pretty good by the end of the season but right now he's just okay marvin harrison is basically winning them games yeah Mm -hmm. if it wasn't for him they might have a loss now they could have lost to maryland yeah but little tula little tua talia tungavaloa uh just kept giving them the ball back Mm -hmm. and ohio state won 37 17 over maryland they don't look great right and they look like another version of ohio state that will get popped by michigan Mm mm-hmm and I'm glad about that. I hope they keep this up. Yeah. All right, moving on to the NFL. We're into week six already. Time is just flying this by. This is ridiculous. I can't stand it. Yeah. Um, We had our first stinker. And by stinker, I mean me. <laughs> I had five correct picks. Oh, boy. And you had nine. 
So okay. you've taken a three-point lead, 48 to 45 on the season. I've taken my rightful place. Um, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> yeah, it was just a bad week for me. I took Houston over Atlanta. I took Tennessee over Indianapolis. Both those games were close. Uh, and then my – That like, Ravens pick, Van. My guess games – I think we both picked the Ravens, We actually. did. Yeah. Uh, my guess game was the Rams beating the Eagles, so that was my flyer. And then also my flyer of Arizona. Joe Burrow looked like he was healthy, so. They looked like they were the Bengals. Rough. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into the – I, I want to talk about the Ravens game when we get there because that's – that was annoying. Um, But starting off week six, we have Denver at Kansas City on Thursday night. Do you want to pick Denver? Why <laughs> would either of us do that? <laughs> Why would we do that to ourselves? I don't know. Denver looks – they look awful. It's its rough, to be honest. Listen, it, if you haven't yet, I'm pretty sure I told you about this YouTube channel, That's Good Sports. Mm-hmm. Brandon Perna. Yeah. He's like one of the most like high-level NFL YouTubers. Please go check out his channel. He has a series called The Worst Game Ever that started like last year or the two seasons ago. And it's up to like part 15 now because the Broncos have gotten worse like in the past two seasons. Yeah. So now it's up to like the worst, 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 worst game ever. Oh, and it God. goes week by week by week. It is hilarious Jeez. and really good. Um, Next up, we have another London game. The Ravens technically at the Titans in London. Holy moly. When are they going to put a team in London? I don't know. Just put the Jaguars, put London's team in London. Yeah. They can't lose there. Mm-hmm. The Ravens are very frustrating. And Understatement. It's funny because uh, I went to the Lions game, and I'll talk more about that when we get there. But um, we were talking about bets and stuff like that, of course, uh, as we do nowadays. And I was saying, oh, definitely pick the Ravens over the Steelers. There's no way. The Steelers are terrible this year. Ravens have been looking pretty good. Four or five drops later. And I know that it's a rivalry um, game, so it's always yeah. you know open-ended. But holy moly. Three touchdown passes dropped. I think eight overall drops as a team. People, again, the media is calling out Lamar Jackson for being not worth the money that he was paid. Just go look. His receivers were dropping balls. Yes, he did throw an interception, a bad interception, and he did fumble. Uh, That's been one of his biggest problems is fumbling. But at the same time, the Ravens easily could have won that game by, like, two scores. Super frustrating. Also, Odell Beckham looks like he might never be healthy again. Yeah, no, he's toast. Yeah. He's, he's toast. Um, with all that said, I think I'm still going at the Ravens. I don't know why at this point, because sometimes they just, they're annoying to me. I'm also picking the Ravens. Okay. Every week, I'll say it again, no faith in those fraud Titans. Yeah, and this is going to be a weird one, because both of these teams are just getting to London, so might not be the most exciting game. Um... Speaking of not exciting games, Commanders at the Falcons. Desmond Ritter had a good game. He finally game. threw the ball, and he still threw it to his tight ends. Jonu and Kyle Pitts, though, at least. I don't know how to feel about either of these teams. The Commanders got smoked on Thursday night by the Bears, and the Falcons barely beat the, the Texans, which we know the Texans are a lot better than you know we expected. But Can I pick first? Uh, yes. I'm going with the Commanders. Okay. They seem to be the type of team that every other week they play up or down. Yeah. Listen, two weeks ago against the Eagles, they were in it. Mm -hmm. They took them to OT. They could have won. Right. Last week against the Bears, they embarrassed themselves and make the Bears look like they're competent. Yeah. This week, Sam Howell's going to ball out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be offense. Commanders are going to put up like 35 to 40 points. Yeah. And they're going to beat the Falcons. Seahawks at the Bengals. You didn't pick. Oh, I'm picking. <laughs> That's because I wrote just it down. Moved, okay. I just went for the Falcons because I think it's a good flip game. Okay. Uh, Seahawks at the Bengals. Seahawks coming off their bye. Bengals coming off Joe Burrow finally looking decently well. Are the Bengals actually back? Or was it just the Cardinals? I don't necessarily think so. So I read Burrow, Bur- Burrow, and Jamar Chase. Yeah, that's a that is a like mm-hmm. true sign of a connection being bad. Yeah, fifteen catches, two hundred yards. And I saw people go deeper into the analytics, and they showed that 
the Cardinals didn't blitz as much as other teams had been blitzing. So Joe Burrow was in a lot less pressure than he's been the last couple of weeks. And they still were throwing the short to intermediate routes to Jamar Chase. Um, the only thing that's maybe a good sign is that Joe Burrow did look a little bit more frisky out of the pocket. He was able to move a bit more than we've seen. So maybe that's a sign that he is getting healthier. Um, but it's a little bit nerve wracking still because he wasn't pressured as much. Now I can't remember how much the Seahawks pressure, um, but the Seahawks are pretty good. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I'm not sold on the Bengals just yet. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. Okay. <clears throat> I think this is a sign of things to come. I think they're going to bounce back. I don't know if they set the world on fire in this game. Yeah. Because the Seahawks have a very good uh, defensive backfield mm -hmm. uh, with those young DBs. Yeah. But I think they do just enough. This could be like a 27-24 close game. Yeah. Where they get a field goal at the end from Evan McPherson. Mm-hmm. I can see it. I'm going with the Bengals. Okay. Colts and Jaguars. Jaguars finally have to come to their real home. Uh, but maybe they should have stayed in London again. Can I pick first? Go for it. We got Minshew Mania on deck. Anthony Richardson sent to the IR. I still don't trust the Jaguars. I'm kind of with you. I'm going with the Zach Moss and Gardner Minshew led Indianapolis Colts. Okay. I, I feel like they are just like a well-coached team. No yeah. matter whether it's Anthony Richardson or Gardner Minshew, they just mm -hmm. they figure things out. Yeah, and they're, they're slowly implementing uh, Jonathan Taylor back into the offense. Josh Downs is getting more snaps each and every week. He's looking pretty good. It, they, it's like the Colts have kind of just left Alec Pierce in the dust, which is wild. Yeah, and apparently their big money running back, is he coming back this week? He was back last week. Well, Zach Moss is the running back this season. Forget that other guy. I'm not even going to say his name. Zach Moss, number 21, is the guy right now. He is balling. Pick him up off the waiver wire. This isn't the fantasy podcast. I think. But pick him up. Yeah. I think Zach Colts Moss win. made a statement because Jonathan Taylor played that, that last game. He only had minimal touches. But that was Zach Moss's best game of his career. Yeah. And he said, yeah, bring him back. You I have to play you. me. Yeah. You have to. Which is pretty wild. I'm not a big Zach Moss fan, but that that was a cool, cool little thing. It's time to be one. I think I'll take the Jags just because it's another good flip game. Um, but I'm with you. Like, there's something about this Jaguars team that I just I can't trust, and I I don't know what it is exactly. But Trevor Lawrence just doesn't look as good. Um, he's just kind of inconsistent. Uh, it still feels like they're trying to figure out what they want to do with this offense. If Travis Etienne has a big game, they probably win because yeah. whenever he plays extremely well, they're always in it. Mm -hmm. And Carolina at Miami. The own five Panthers. The Panthers got popped last week in Detroit, but Bryce Young made some improvements. Sure. He did. Sure. He threw he three touchdown passes. Threw 270 yards, I think. Through two picks, two picks, yeah. but <laughs> well, I think I think he improved in certain areas. Yeah, I mean it was still a struggle because the Panthers just aren't that good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, I'm not picking the Panthers. I'm <laughs> the Dolphins. No, yeah. If Mike White was starting, I'd still pick the Dolphins. <laughs> I think you agree. Yeah, and Devon Achan also on IR, another big hit uh, to the injury bug this week. Tariq Hill might catch like four touchdown passes in this game. Could be, he, he's but just they might be end. Streaking open. The game might be over <clears throat> at, after the first quarter. So, yeah. um, NFC North battle: Vikings at oh, Bears. God. It's a one in four <laughs> matchup. Oh, how I'll about this? I'll tell you right now. I'm picking the Bears because Justin I want Jefferson better. is out. Yes, Justin Jefferson is on IR, and I want better for Kirk Cousins. I'm picking the Bears. I agree. Justin Fields, I think, is maybe on his way. I think DJ Moore has another big game. Yeah. Now, the Vikings still have weapons, even though they don't have Justin Jefferson. Jordan Addison's looked good. TJ Hawkinson. KJ Osborne was their number two guy last year, basically. Uh, so, I think offensively, they're there, fine. There is a universe where the Bears embarrass themselves again. Yeah, And easily. Kirk still puts up yards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think this is a, is a wash game. But I'm at this point, I'm, writing, I'm ready for the Vikings to implode. So, 
taking the Bears. Uh, 49ers at the Browns. The Browns have a good defense. In the last away game, Brock Purdy played at the Rams. He was kind of inconsistent. Yeah. Browns have a really good defense. The but Bra- that doesn't matter. The Browns got diced up by Lamar. So Yeah. The they're the best team in the league by a wide margin, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, I can't pick Cleveland. And unfortunately for the Browns as well, uh PJ Walker is now their backup to Deshaun. Oh boy. So one game of DTR and <laughs> he's gone. It stinks. Uh New Orleans at Houston. This is a weird one. Can you imagine what would happen if they threw DTR out there against the 49ers? No. I don't <laughs> want to. Not for him. Listen, it's, it's October. We can think of some horror, horror give him, stuff. Give him more time. That would be your new favorite horror movie. No. Give, give him more time. <laughs> Saints at Texans. The Saints are so weird. Yeah, they are. They and are. the Texans are fun, but I still don't know if they're actually good. Yeah. This is a weird game. Mm-hmm. I think the Saints defense is kind of – holding them together while Derek Carr is maybe getting back to being healthy. How about you pick this one? Okay, I will try. You go ahead. Alvin Kamara has looked much better this season, I think, than he did last year already. Hasn't he only played one or two games? He's played two games. Okay. But he's already looked better than he did last year, in my opinion. Um, The first game, he had 13 catches. Second game, he had like 80 rushing yards, which was pretty decent. Um, The Texans... Tank Dell might play. I think he's still in the concussion protocol, but he has plenty of time to to come out of that. Um, I think if he plays, that could be interesting because if he doesn't play, I believe the saints are getting, uh, I heard Marcus may is coming back this week. Um, so that secondary gets scarier for the saints. Um, and I think they can lock up Nico Collins, but if tank Dell is healthy, then they have to worry about a couple guys. Plus you have Robert Woods in the slot. Maybe they could mix it up, um, and figure things out. Damian Pierce is probably gonna get stuffed because the run defense for new Orleans is really good. Um, I'm not really figuring out a case here for either team. I'm going to go with the Texans because they're at home. And I might be wrong, but. In that case, I will go with the Saints. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't figure out a a strong case. So I'm just going to go with home field advantage, hopefully coming to fruition. Patriots at the Raiders. Oh, boy. This is the Patriots' last chance. I think if the Patriots lose this game, Bill Belichick needs to be fired. I'll say it right here. He won't be fired. No, he won't be. But he needs to be. There will be an agreement between both sides. That That's what the news will, will yeah. sound like. Yeah. There was an agreement between both parties that right. a change needs to be made. Yeah. That will be like at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Raiders win. Yeah, I agree. Actually. Oh. Actually. I'm going with the Raiders, so I'll tell you that straight up. That would be crazy. I kind of that want would be crazy. Honestly, I kind of want the Raiders to lose so that the Lions have a better chance of going after Max Crosby. Patriots win. Oh boy. If that happens, I think he still might have one left in him, especially against Josh McDaniels. They're Josh, not going one in sixteen. That's a good point. They against, are not going one in sixteen. He's against Josh McDaniels. Yeah. So. Hmm. Okay. Cardinals at the Rams. Cardinals are in like every game, but uh, they're one and four. The Rams got Cooper Cup back, and he looks healthy. The Rams, yeah, I'm going with the Rams too. Eagles at the Jets. It would be, <laughs> it would be really funny if Zach Wilson went out there and did again like what he did against Pat Mahomes mm-hmm. and just looked awesome. And they gave the Eagles their first loss. Brees Hall getting all the touches has definitely helped this team. It's what should be happening. We're, they shouldn't have signed Dalvin Cook. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I was trying to remember what side you were on. You liked the Zeke signing, yes. not the Dalvin Cook. Yes. Okay. I only liked Dalvin Cook to get them through the first couple weeks. I did not like the, the Zeke signing. But that's looking wrong as well because Ramondre has looked bad as well. But, yes. Brees Hall taking all the carries is good news for the Jets. I can't pick them. I, I just can't. The Eagles are too good of a team. Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown have been Let's make cooking. things interesting. I'm taking the New York Jets. Oh, gosh. This is for Chris this week. <laughs> a good old shootout between Zach Wilson and Jalen Hurts. 
I guess you have a lead. Who would have thought? I guess you have a lead to play with. And the Jets defense gave me 18 points last week. They're still a good defense. They can force yeah. good quarterbacks to make mistakes. They can. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Are you going to pick back? I picked the Patriots and the Jets. Are you going to pick? Go. Are you going to pick back to back New York teams? Sunday night football. Giants. Oh wait! Oh, stop it! Wait! 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 I forgot. I have to go back to the top because we got flexed. The Lions oh, yeah, 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 at the yeah, yeah. Bucks. This is. This should be a really good game. Four and one versus three and one. Lions. In four of their next, three of their four next games are on the road. This is their toughest or biggest stretch of the season. If the Lions can come out like three and one in this stretch, going in to the bye being what seven and two or something, they're in complete control. They would look so good. Yeah, and I think they have to win this game. The resurrection of Baker Mayfield, Joey. Did you see this coming? No, I did not. He's playing very well. Yeah, he especially is, especially that game in New Orleans. Yeah. Luckily for us, I think there's a chance that Mike Evans might not play in this game. It sounds like he's still kind of lingering with that hamstring. Like I said about Bryce Young last week, I think the same applies for Baker. Mm -hmm. You get pressure on him. Yeah. Cause him to throw funky. Mistakes will happen. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to, we're not, like, Rashad White is nothing. He's going to be nothing. A nothing I love that. (laughs) That that sounds horrible, but it's hilarious. Rashad White is nothing. Yeah. You are nothing. But it's mostly because of the Lions defense, to be honest. Yeah. The Lions have just been run isn't stuffing there, isn't every there run team. run defense like top five? It is yeah. impressive. I Honestly, if there's anything you want to bet week to week with the Lions, always do the under for their rushing yards of their opponent. Last week, Miles Sanders' rushing yard prop was like 43 and a half, and I still bet the under. And it hit. So that's something to watch out for. Unless maybe if Rashad White is at like 30 yards, then maybe you can go to over. The one thing I'll say, this will be a big test for the Lions as well because the Bucks do have a good run defense as well. Their front seven is pretty strong. Um, they might be able to get uh, pressure to Jared Goff as well. This will be a, a good early test for the offensive line. Joe Tryon Shoyenka is coming. Yeah. So I'm hoping that uh, ASB is healthy for this game because um, we're going to need a, a nice slot guy. But Sam Laporta is the man. He's the truth. I went. I, the real I mentioned I went to the game on Sunday, and what they did with Sam Laporta was so cool to watch. Um, he can get open on his by himself, but yeah. they scheme ways to get him even more open. Exactly. Um, the The energy with this team right now is is something else. Uh, it was fun to watch, and I hope they continue it. Like I said, they have the Bucks on the road, and they have the Ravens on the road. Then they get Monday night at home against the Raiders. That should be the easy win. And then they go to the Chargers. And the funny thing is, SoFi Stadium is probably going to be a home game. They're playing Brandon Staley. That's all yeah. you need to know. Yeah. They're playing against the... the but uh, it's uh, it's still a no-slouch opponent. So I guess. This, yeah. is a, this is a great stretch for the Lions. But I think this game, out of all of them, needs to be a must-win. Because it starts that road tour. Right. And I'm not picking Tampa Bay. Why would I pick Tampa Bay? You're picking the Lions, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Back to Sunday night football. Giants at the Bills. My boy might be starting this game. You're not going to do this, are you? I don't think so, but (laughs) only because I like that O line feels because I like the Bills. Be afraid for your boy. Yeah. This is a spooky October for Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. But I- I'm <laughs> I'm kind of happy to see him start. I want to see what he can do with this Giants offense. <sighs> Good luck. <laughs> I know. Good luck. I know. I'm going with the Bills. It's at home on a Sunday he night. He might be able to escape a few sacks and only get sacked like six or seven times. Yeah. It's at Buffalo on Sunday night, prime time. Josh Allen's going to ball out. No doubt. And then Monday night, Cowboys and Chargers. Uh, listen, I love the seeing Chargers the Cowboys win this game. Huh? I said if the Chargers win this game, it would make me so happy. Exactly. That's e- the point. Even th- how much I hate Brandon Staley. Mm-hmm. I just seeing the Cowboys fall down again. Yeah, two prime that time. Loss, that la- that loss last week was so enjoyable. Yeah, seeing the 49ers just crush them. Yeah, everybody getting starting to feel good about the Cowboys, and then right when they do. 
You just sit them back down again. I'm going to Chargers. I just think, I know the Chargers keep hurting themselves, but I got I to gotta keep going with them. I said they're going to be good this year, and they haven't shown it just yet. But Austin Eckler is supposed to be back. For the sake of these picks, I'm not happy I'm doing it, but I'm taking the Cowboys just for the sake of the picks. Okay. That's fair. It's a, it's a decent flip game. Yeah. Huh. Okay. There was something else that I wanted to talk about the Lions about, and I already forgot what it was. Um, this is why we are some of the best in the game right here. Right. Because we remember everything yeah. that we want to talk about. It's just right off the right off the top. <laughs> um, what was it? Oh, I wanted to talk about Jameson Williams for a little bit. Do you, have any, you looked like you had a thought. I do. Okay. But I wanted to formulate it uh, right. Is he the one kind of standout potential mistake that they've made in high draft picks? I don't know if I want to call I don't it. know if they will ever figure out how to just make him fit in the offense. Yeah. Like the, Josh Josh Reynolds fits like a glove. Mm-hmm. Amon or St. Brown fits like a glove. Yeah. They figured it out with DJ Chart. Mm-hmm. Which means they could eventually figure it out with John, Jameson Williams. Yeah. But then, the like, the drops. Yeah. I want to <laughs> say, I don't know if it's a mistake, but I don't think that they knew that Jameson was as raw of a talent as he is. He made a great block on that uh, David Montgomery touchdown run. Yeah. Like, I think they thought that he would be better sooner. And that they, he wouldn't have to be as much of a project. Like, imagine if the Lions were not as good as they've been playing. I don't think people would be as concerned about Jamison Williams. The problem is this team is on the verge of doing something special. And they don't have time to be trying to just give reps to Jamison Williams because they need to be winning football games. And I think that's the biggest problem because a lot of the Dan Campbell talk has kind of said, like, they're just ramping him up slowly. And it just, they don't sound convinced that he's just ready to go right now. And like I said, that's that's going to be a battle because you can't spend that extra time in a game to get him those game time reps when, again, you're trying to win games. So I don't know if... Again, I, I'm, it's hard to say if it's a mistake, but it just we may not see it for a couple more weeks still. And that's what I said is the nice thing about him coming back early from that suspension is that he comes back. Technically, we weren't expecting him for, what is it, another week? Yeah. And then he would have been ramped up then. So we just got to ramp him up a little bit earlier so that hopefully he'll be ready by the time we originally expected him to to come back. So I'm hoping there's still a chance that down the stretch of games during the season, especially if we do have the North wrapped up early, like say by Thanksgiving, realistically by Thanksgiving, we could have the division wrapped up, which is yeah. wild to think about. <laughs> At that point, you can, you can play with it a little bit. Um, Especially in hopefully like when we play certain teams, uh, like the Bears or the Vikings, even when we play the Vikings at home, we can blow teams out and get him more reps. Like in that Panthers game, he played a lot more than I thought he would, but we were so far ahead most of the game, they were able to get him more snaps. They drew up a couple of throws to him. All the screens that they threw to him were just bad. He tended to start running before he catched caught the ball and I think that might be part of why he's dropping the ball as he's just getting ahead of himself and he needs to slow himself down mentally um, before he speeds his body up and because each like I think both of the screens that he threw to him he he like slipped and fell as he's running um, so I'm not I'm not sure but I, I think he's going to have his time it's just again the, the team can't can't necessarily wait around for him. And I, I think that's the hardest part as a fan. Do you see anything from Jameson that 
would make you think that way, or how do you feel about the whole situation? I just think every play they it seems like they draw up for him is kind of awkward. Yeah, it's a little yeah. too forced sometimes. Yeah, it never seems like everything they done with Sam Laporta just seems to make sense. Yeah, the every o- single thing. The other thing that I'll say too, being at the game, there was a couple times where it didn't seem like I don't know if it's a trust issue, and I've heard other people bring this up too. That Jared Goff did not look Jameson's way. And I know specifically there was one time where I think Jameson was started in the slot and did a post across the field to the opposite side. And if Goff would have seen him, he was wide open for a touchdown. Like one move beat his man, he was gone. So maybe there's a bit of that too where Jared Goff has to start trusting him a little bit more to get those open routes. But maybe it's also that he doesn't trust him to even catch the ball. That That's the hard part. Um, so maybe there's just a chemistry issue. Who knows exactly? But I, I think he's going to be okay. It just might not be as special or as quickly as people thought. He, It doesn't seem like he's going to be Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase or something like that. He might just be... Um. He's probably closer to like what Christian Watson is for uh, Green Bay. Not as big, but he's fast, and you can throw some go routes to him. Yeah. Jameson's going to be interesting. Um, the other thing that I was going to bring up was Aiden Hutchinson again. Had another pick in this game. <laughs> Put all the effort in. Had a ton of pressures. He still didn't fully get home, though. Like, And the Lions in general, that was another thing that Is I took away. Is he up with four and a half sacks for the season? Yeah, four and a half. Yeah. Um, that was another thing that I noticed in this game. Lions, once again, with a running quarterback in the backfield, struggled to get home. Or a, a mobile quarterback in the pocket. Some of that I, I can give to Bryce Young because he got rid of the ball early enough. Um, but th- th- that's something that also concerns me, too, with these next upcoming games. We're going to play Baker Mayfield. He's mobile in the pocket. Lamar Jackson, one of the most mobile quarterbacks. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo, we're going to destroy him. Uh, the Chargers, Justin Herbert, also mobile. So that's another thing about those away games that I think is interesting. With the emergence of mobile quarterbacks, I want to see the Lions be able to draw up different blitz packages to be able to figure out how to contain that stuff. And that, I think that's the most frustrating thing for me watching the games. Um, and I don't obviously I'm not a defensive guy, so I don't know how they do that. But it's something that it's not concerning. But I, I just I want the Lions to get more sacks because they're there every time. I personally think Aiden has a big game coming soon. Yeah. I see a three or four sack game mm-hmm. coming where all of those pressures, where it's still, it means something that he's at the top of the league in pressures. Yeah. He's constantly m- making the pocket. Uh, it's, it's not a clean pocket, and he's making the QB uncomfortable. Right. But I he's going to start getting there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know exactly what game, but. Yeah, yeah, I, I see a game where he gets more than a few. Yeah, that's the one other thing, too, that I was going to bring up as well, um, or made me think about. Um, Emmanuel Mosley tore his other ACL in this game. He's out for the season. Pretty disappointing, um, as that was his first game back. But the good news is, the Lions got healthy in this game. Kirby Joseph came back. He looked pretty good. Jerry Jacobs still playing. He got another pick. It's wild because we were talking about how terribly he was playing for a while. And now he's just, he's be, he's, he's getting in the right spots. It seems like, I don't know if he's playing any better coverage necessarily, but yeah, he's making a play when it, when it comes to his side, Mm -hmm. when the ball comes his way, he's making a play. Yeah. The one thing too, that I noticed in the Panthers games, the lions really stepped up in the red zone. Their, their coverage in the red zone was much much better than I thought. Between the 20s, they let Thielen get whatever they want. So this upcoming week against Tampa Bay, I'm a little bit nervous about Chris Godwin. 
But if they don't have Mike Evans, then they have nothing to take the top off, which is nice. Um, but, yeah, the, the Lions secondary has actually played pretty good throughout all their little injuries uh, here and there. And they're still getting defensive guys back. And they just look like a complete team right now. And uh, it was exciting to go to the game. It was my first ever Lions game. And, uh, oh, that was the last thing I want to bring up. All the celebrities that came out to the game. That was cool. Eminem was there. Isaiah Thomas was there. Devin Booker was there for the summer league. Yeah. Or summer preseason. Um, he was there before the preseason game, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he stayed for, like, I don't know, probably kickoff. It's and wild how, away. like, dedicated he actually is to Detroit sports. Yeah. And he probably will never be a Detroit Pistons. <laughs> we can still hope, Malik. Okay. He's got a long career out of him. We can still hope. Um, Calvin Johnson was there, of course, again. Jalen Rose was there. So there, there were some faces, which is – it's cool to see that celebrities are coming back. Yeah. Which just adds to every – like, when Eminem was shown on the screen, people went crazy. Because my brother, my brother has season tickets, and he said Eminem, like, never shows up. And he showed up because they, they showed just his Twitter. So they kept showing the celebrities, and then when Eminem came up, they were like, yeah, Eminem put out a tweet. And we're like, oh, man, it's just a tweet. And then they switched to him up in one of the suites, and we're like, we went crazy. And that was fun to see. I can't wait to see what Monday night's going to be. All right, that's all I got. I was trying to think of all the things that I saw while I was at the game. But uh, I think that's everything. So this has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time.